<clears throat> Has anyone here not used Canvas before? Okay, so all the stuff will be on Canvas. Um, any handouts I give you, footage, whatever else, will be through Canvas. So if you ever need to get your sheet, you lost it, whatever, it'll be through this. <clears throat> uh, first day handout, yes. All right, so uh, my name is Sean Sarcona. I think I've had most of you in this class before. Um, here's my email address. <clears throat> There's my phone number. What's the best way to contact me? Email. Email, yep. Um, this is our section number, class time, 5 to 8, <clears throat> and R127. So should be a pretty nice time of day to be meeting, especially when we get later on. It'll be kind of warm, especially if this is your last class, leaving. It'll be a good time. Um, required materials, <clears throat> note-taking book, sketching book, and writing utensil. For this class, there will be no sketching that we need to do for the assignments, uh, but I do recommend if you're in the MACA program that you still sketch every single day or at least every other day. The more you sketch, the better your sketches will be, okay? You will need a note-taking book. Um, Nuke is a monster of a software. It's not... Um, when you enter the intro to 3D class, <clears throat> if you were in it, one of the things I tell people is it's like no other software you've used before. Well, Nuke is like no other software you've used before, even beyond 3D. Um, it can be very tricky. The cool thing about it is once you know the nuts and bolts of it, it applies across the board to anything else you want to do in the software. So bring a note-taking book. <clears throat> uh, bring writing utensils so you can write stuff down. Um, <clears throat> a minimum hard drive size would be about 100 gigs. Um, you can get by with um, maybe half of that. Mm, I'd say maybe 60 gigs. Uh, but you will definitely need to, at 100 gigs, be transferring files on and off your drive to make sure you're balancing the load. We might end up with 200 gigs of files just for this class. Uh, we're going to be reading in. We're going to have, like, let's say, a movie. <clears throat> we're going to take that movie into After Effects and make it files. We'll take those files, bring them into Nuke, do stuff with it, and then export those out as another set of files. So for each project, we might have several areas, several bunches of files that we're dealing with, okay? So our storage is gonna be eaten up a lot. As an example, one project we had um, last year, the files for it alone were like 30 gigs, the files that I would give people. Yeah, so just be aware. <clears throat> Um, you will need a pair of headphones. Um, make sure you have something, even if you get from the Dollar Tree or whatever. When I record my lectures, there's audio in it, so that way you can hear what I'm saying and understand what I'm doing. Um, Nuke's interface is um, it's underwhelming, I guess, <clears throat> but it can do a whole lot of stuff. I'll show you it just so you can see what it looks like. While it's loading. Hey, there's uh, handouts going around somewhere. Where are the last ones? Over there. Yep. You can grab one from Austin way in the back. That'll be on the lecture, by the way. <clears throat> so this is the interface. You can see it looks pretty simple. But inside us is a whole bunch of stuff that goes on, and it's very easy to lose track of where we're, uh, where we're at, okay? <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you have <clears throat> the headphones so you can understand what I'm saying. Hotkeys work differently depending on where your mouse is, all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> I'd also recommend or require at least four hours outside of class to work on your stuff. Um, you might need two hours, you might need three hours, you might not need any time, but... Four hours is a good amount of time to spend outside of class, making sure you understand the tools. Everything we do will build on everything until we get to that last assignment. So you want to make sure that you have a good grasp of it before you move on to the next pieces, okay? Uh, you also need professionalism and a desire to learn. <clears throat> Recommended materials. Any Nuke or generic compositing book is always good to have. Even though the class is called uh, Compositing with AE and Nuke, After Effects and Nuke, most of our work will be done inside of Nuke, okay? Um, I'll show stuff in After Effects 2 just so you can see it, so we can experience it. But like I said, a majority of this will be inside of Nuke. Um, uh, 
<clears throat> these kinds of books are always good to get it's just so you can get an idea of what else is out there um, Stephen Wright is one of the uh, major authors of compositing books um, nuke stuff if you look up tutorials he's the one who's doing a lot of the tutorials too um, nuke 101 is a good one there's some like this <clears throat> some of these are even like nuke and after effects all in the same book which is kind of neat so if you can find a book like that um, it's definitely worthwhile to be able to read through it because we're going to touch on just a small part of Nuke. Um, even in the 16 weeks, it's going to be very little compared to how big Nuke actually is. Um, also, a Pluralsight account is recommended, <clears throat> not required. Uh, Pluralsight, if you're not familiar with it, is a tutorial website. Um, it's about $180 or so. Our bookstore might have it, or Eastern Michigan's bookstore online would have it. You can get it from uh, either, I think. And with this one, <clears throat> you could look up anything. So if we get to a spot where you're using Photoshop, they have hundreds of hours of just how to do Photoshop stuff, how to draw in Photoshop, how to do matte paintings, how to do all this stuff. Um, so I recommend it. This is typically what people in the industry are using. Uh, once they are out in the industry and they're doing jobs and they need to know, like, how do you do something over... The course of a day, I could watch an entire video while I'm working on stuff, and that way I'm kind of like working twice as hard. Yeah. Um, software, Adobe CC, Nuke. <clears throat> Maya is not required. Um, we will not be um, using Maya in this class, except for I will be showing things. Some of the stuff that we do, um, we'll use 3D elements. So the people who are 3D students, I want to show you Here's what I did in 3D to get these assets. Um, Nuke is used highly in the automotive industry, the um, product industry, a lot of the stuff around here for doing that kind of stuff. I have a car, I render it out into all these different pieces, <clears throat> and then I put it all together. In the movie industry, they'll have spaceships, backgrounds, whatever it is, they'll render all those things separately and put them all together inside of Nuke. So I want you to see that, but you won't be required to use any 3D software, okay? Um, well, Nuke has a 3D thing, but it's it's fine. Um, so Adobe CC, you can get a discount, for 20 bucks a month through the Adobe website. Uh, Maya, if you wanted to use it, you can download a three-year trial um, through Autodesk website. And Nuke is free for um, people registered for this class. So you have to go to <clears throat> the Foundry's website and download. Um, How you doing, Kaicho? Um, you can probably sit next to Jake there. You can move the seat. So on the Foundry's website, <clears throat> you can go to um, Try for Free. You'll download the software, and then you can use the software at home with this license here. It'll say, I want to register a license. You type in that license number. Oops. If you're using a laptop in class, that license number won't work. You'd have to use these ones. That's only accessible from outside the college's network. It's kind of weird how it's set up, but it is. Yeah. Um, so I would, again, recommend you um, get Nuke at home. That way you can play with it outside of class, not just while you're sitting in this room. Uh, the more time you spend in it, the easier it's going to be to grasp what the concepts are. <clears throat> this course is meant to be an introduction to um, visual effects that can be utilized to combine real world and visual elements to enhance videos. Um, it's more than that, but that's the gist of it. Uh, we'll be matching real world, real world cameras and digital ones, creating HDR image maps, removing green screens, compositing elements together, creating animations that utilize scripts, compositing render layers, and tracking motion. Um, if you've seen any movies in the past 20 years, Nuke has been in there at some point, okay? Um, all the way back to Lord of the Rings, <clears throat> Digital Domain was a, um, the company that did all the visual effects for them. They developed Nuke as a compositing tool. There was, um, After Effects, which is a $500 program. There was Flame, which is a $500,000 program. They created their own version, which was Nuke, which was much more affordable, and then once they were done with it, they kind of released it to the foundry to sell it and make their own money off of it. Um, so it has a long history of being used for that kind of stuff. 
Uh, our assignments for the class, <clears throat> we'll have a hotkey and definitions test, just like every other class. I'll pass those out next time. Um, our first uh, thing that we'll be doing is a game system composite. I'm going to be giving you renderings from, a, uh, from 3D. And it's basically we're going to put the elements together and show you how you can change the elements and modify what they look like. Okay, So if I have a car that's red and I want it to be blue, I can't just like take the hue and saturation and slide it to blue. I have to make sure that the reflections and everything else still line up the way they should. Okay, So that'll be our first go at this. Um, and just to, I guess, frighten you, I guess, if that works. That's what it's going to look like when we're done. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it does, right? <laughs> It'll make more sense once we get there. Uh, then we'll do some tracking. There's several different kinds of tracking. I want you to see that. Um, if you had me for After Effects or Sean, uh, she in for After Effects, um, After Effects is very limited as to how the tracking stuff is done. Nuke has a bunch of stuff you can do for tracking. So we'll explore um, all the ways you can track inside there. Um, we'll also be um, extracting keys. And then our last project will be putting it all together. <clears throat> so this putting it all together, it's very um, limited as far as my input. Because at that point, you know all the tools. It's just a matter of you being able to put all of those things together. If we shoot a video or we use a video from the internet or whatever it is, feel free to grab your own videos or use your own videos too. As long as you have the rights to use them, definitely. If we do something with the green screen, um, I'll show you some of the footage that I have already. <clears throat> Whatevs. Mm, that one. So here's a piece of footage that we'll use for some stuff. So you can see there's a green screen, there's a guy putting his hand in front of the stuff. We're going to remove the green screen, put a different screen on the back of it. <clears throat> if you say, hey, I want to use my own footage for this, sure, take your own footage there. That's funny. It's covered up pretty good, but I wonder if you can see that number. Uh, but yeah, you could shoot your own footage of something like this and replace it in there. And what that does is you go out to the world, you show your demo reel, you show your portfolio to people. If 10 people have this video in theirs and one person has a different video, that shows you're willing to go beyond at least finding a different piece of footage, right? So, and there's other ones too. These are all royalty free ones that I have <clears throat> that we can use. And they're all used for different things. This one is like a tracking one. So the screen is not static. The screen is actually like moving because his hand is moving and it's a green screen. And you can see there's some blurring here, so we have some uh, motion blur that we'd have to account for as well. Okay, so lots of different things that you know we would be aware of. Here's another cool one, mm -hmm. <laughs> and this one's really interesting because of that. This little thing right here, it confuses the keyer, so we have to show how to key that specifically. So, but cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of them, yes. Some of them, no. So um, After Effects has a camera tracker. And basically what it does is it, you hit a button and it tracks the camera. Nuke has the same thing, but you have a lot more control of it. And you can actually see the camera and you can actually take the camera and you can put it in 3D or you can send it off to other softwares. Yep. Okay. So you can do it. It's just a matter of the limitations of it. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and we'll talk about some of the other ones too. Um, Nuke's only one tool. We used to have several tools that we would use, like PF Track and Buju and some other stuff. Um, I'll show those, but we don't require them just because of the cost of the software for one assignment is kind of silly, right? Um, so all of these points add up to 100. <clears throat> um, if you've had me before, um, I used to do going beyond points, I used to do sketching points. Those are gone, they're just incorporated now into the assignments, okay? So there's no sketching needed for this class. And the going beyond are just incorporated into the rest of the assignments there. Um, you get deducted points for doing this kind of stuff. So if you're texting during a lecture or um, working on something else during class, um, you get points deducted. <clears throat> Keys to success. Show up to class, each class on time and ready to work. Pay attention during lectures, take notes. Ensure you understand what's required. Work during class, do homework, meet deadlines, ask questions, and push your skills. Keys to failure miss classes or constantly be late, socializing during class, make up excuses why your work isn't done, 
guessing what's required, not taking notes, and then turning in work as you feel like it, okay? So um, I should probably say those in the opposite order because you're going to remember these and do these, I think. Don't do those. All right. Uh, cool. Any questions on that sheet? I, there's another sheet back there that will come around. Or maybe Jake has an extra one. He's, he's hoarding it. See, I knew it. <laughs> And then we'll do the same thing here. That one and that one. And if you already have one of these, you don't need to get another one. This is the same one as the previous class. So this is the same one <coughs> from all the other classes today. Free. Is it still, is it still <clears throat> yeah, Maya is still free. Yeah. Okay. Nope. And same thing with cinema. You can re-get a cinema license too if you needed it. Okay. Cool. That, that, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't pass this one out yet. <clears throat> um, thank you, sir. Um, this one I sent to the printer. They haven't printed it yet, so when they print it, I will disperse them in class. Uh, welcome to winter 2019. With fall semester behind you, another semester moves forward. <clears throat> for some of you, this is your first semester. Some of you will be graduating. Among you are the future designers for branding and websites, animators, illustrators, editors, photographers, and videographers. While in class, you'll learn skills and techniques that can take you anywhere of your choosing. Past MAC students have and are working all over the world doing what you are training for here. A single class can take you far. Each semester brings you closer to making your vision a reality. There's no limit to where you can go or what you can do except the one you place on it. Classes can take you only so far. <clears throat> you have to work in and out of class to ensure you are using what you have learned. It is not enough to pass a class. You have to absorb and use the information and the knowledge attained. If you take the time to learn Photoshop or Illustrator but don't use it regularly, you will forget it. Companies want students who are eager to learn, professional, creative, and skilled. You can't be only as good as your last classes. You have to be a culmination of your education inside and outside the classroom. If you've forgotten something, it's your job to relearn it. If you aren't creative, read a book, watch a video, do exercises. If you can't do something, find out how. <clears throat> Anything can be learned if given time. Use the next 17 weeks to obtain new skills, reinforce areas you have learned before, and find areas you need to improve. So that will lead us into this, which is beginning with the end in mind. That was not my zooming tool. There we go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so this is what I like to think about. Every time I design a class, assignments, whatever it is, I look at what I want you to walk away from the class with, and I work my way backwards to the very starting assignment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you eventually want to move out of your parents' house. You want to have jobs. You want to be doing stuff on your own, staying up late, partying, whatever it is. Um, in order to do that, you have to get a job so that you can do that kind of stuff or win the lottery, okay? Um, that would be the easiest way, but we're here to do the job thing. So we're going to begin with the end in mind. We're going to get you those skills that will get you to the point of understanding how to do nuke, and understanding compositing. It's up to you, though, to take those skills and push them to where they need to be, okay? Um, this class can be very, like, I got the nuts and bolts, I passed the class great, or it could be like I really understand Nuke and how it all connects together and I created some really cool things, okay? It was a huge program. Uh, classroom policies. <clears throat> Attendance. If the college is open, we will have class. So sometimes I have meetings, um, a student grabs me five minutes before class and they meet with me for 20 minutes. I may not be here right on time, but there will be class. So hang out, wait for me, do work, whatever you can, okay? Um, show up on time and start working. Do not leave early. <clears throat> you can make up absences by sitting in another class. I'm here all day long, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. So if you need assistance during the day and you want to come in here and work, come in here and work earlier. Um, most of my classes have some open seats in them. It may only be one or two, but there's still some open seats. Um, definitely do that. 
Um, if you have more than four absences, that will equal a failing grade. <clears throat> if you have perfect attendance and all your assignments are submitted, you'll get three points added to your final grade. So that's typically going to take someone from a B plus to an A minus or a B to a B plus or whatever. Assignments need to be turned in on time and at least 75% completed. So make sure you have um, your assignments turned in. One of the things that slows us down in this class is just the speed that the computers can read the files and all the changes we've done to them. Um, when we hit play on our stuff to see what the video looks like, it may go super duper slow, depending on how much stuff we have going on. Okay. Uh, apart from that, everything else is pretty quick as long as you have the stuff set up correctly. Um, assignments not turned in on time <clears throat> is a one point deduction per week. Uh, I attempt to record all my lectures. If the microphone dies, the batteries die, the system crashes, that doesn't get recorded. My goal is to record all the, stu the major stuff outside of class and only talk about the framework inside of class. That's my goal. That way when you come in, I don't have to sit up here and lecture for an hour before you can actually start working. I lecture for a half hour and then you can get right into it. Okay, that's the goal. Uh, if my voice plays nice, then we can do that. <clears throat> Uh, pay attention during lectures, take notes, ask questions, do not work. Uh, lectures are a great resource, watch them and use them. You're here to be a productive member of society. Your behavior in class and communication should reflect that. If you shouldn't do it at work, don't do it here. Swearing, slacking, screwing around, disrespecting the room, equipment, or students is not allowed. Um, don't leave a mess in the class. Don't spread your germs. I don't have to say it, or I shouldn't have to say it, but I will. If you have, uh, you cut your nails, you bite your nails, you shed, whatever it is, clean up after yourself. People leave stuff all over the desks. I have to take pictures and email them and say, don't do this, this is disgusting. So don't do that, okay? <clears throat> if you go to the bathroom, wash your hands. If you sneeze into your hand, wash your hands. Clean your area. I bought these for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. There's only one left, I think I have another container back there. Get one at the Dollar Tree. Same thing with hand sanitizer. That's a dollar hand sanitizer. <clears throat> uh, there's a student handbook. Whether you've read it or not, you've agreed to abide by it. Be respectful of the equipment. These computers need to last us a long time. So as frustrating as we might get with the software, we can't beat them up yet. Uh, remember to be professional. Uh, there's no eating in class. No, uh, You can drink in class as long as it's in a sealed container. So you can do that. Uh, there is no eating in class, no eating in class, no eating in class, and no eating in class. <laughs> yes. I have to put it that many times, too, and then it works. <laughs> uh, any work you turn in that's not yours is plagiarism, which could result in failing an assignment, failing a class, being removed from the class, being removed from the department, being removed from the college. Um, typically, it doesn't elevate to that level. Typically, people realize what they've done and correct it, but don't do it. In this class, it's going to be very difficult for the most part to do that kind of thing. Um, all of our assignments, even though we may be following the same pattern, um, you're still going to have certain things about your specific assignment that are going to be yours and yours alone. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if somebody else comes over and does some of your assignment, you say, I don't know how to do the first half of this assignment. They come over and do the first half of the assignment. Well, that's their work, even though it's on your computer and even though it doesn't exist on their computer too. So don't do that either. You're here to learn. And you can't learn unless somebody is doing your unless you're doing your assignment. Okay, your grade is your responsibility. <clears throat> if you uh, want to pass the class, every assignment must be turned in late or on time. Here is the grading schedule over here: uh, 98 to 100 is an A, 93 to 97 is an A minus, and so on. <clears throat> I thought I'd include this in here too. Um, one of my associate deans asked one time, he's like, how do people get, like some classes I see, because he sees, I guess, reports of all the grades. He says, how do some of these classes have all A's? Like, that's not average. An average means C. It means that you have some A's, some E's, but most of them are kind of like in the C range, maybe a B or a D or whatever. <clears throat> so this lays it out pretty good. A C is average, okay? It's adequate but ordinary. Uh, a B signifies a solid level of accomplishment and goodness. It just didn't have that extra little oomph to push you to an A. An A is outstanding. They're not impossible to achieve, but rare and difficult to come by. Um, D represents <clears throat> less than standard, mediocre, just passable. And E is a clear failure, lack of effort, interest, cause for deep concern. 
So any of these are achievable by you. It's just a matter of where you stand. It's up to you as to if you want to, if you don't care, then you can stay right there. If you do care, then move up the chain. Everyone in this class can get an A. That's not something you can't be done. Just on the whole, typically, I have A's, B's, C's, D's, and E's. That's the way it works. Uh, frequently asked questions. So this is the interactive part. What's the best way to reach me? Email. Thank you. Can I bring in food or beverage into class? Closed cap drinks? No food. Bring in my, mom, bring in my own mouse or tablet? Yep. Just don't disconnect any of the stuff. Um, on the monitors are two ports. You can plug right into there. If you need drivers loaded, <clears throat> um, we can't do anything about that. You can try loading them. Just don't reboot the computer because it'll not work. Um, typically, people don't have a problem with it. Um, if you do have a mouse that's wireless, make sure you take the mouse and any other thing you may have plugged into. I don't think we've ever lost a mouse in here. Usually, I find them and bring them up here. Austin can attest to that. Every <laughs> five times a semester, I think at least, he leaves his mouse here. <laughs> <laughs> right, <clears throat> anything. Uh, I want to work at home instead of coming in, or I want to leave early. Is that okay? Uh, it's okay if you want to. You'll just be marked absent. Okay. So if you're not here, you're marked absent. It's up to you. Everyone in this room is over 18, I'm assuming, or 18 and over, right? So you're adults. <clears throat> it's up to you. You paid 600 bucks to be here. Um, I'm not a babysitter, I'm not going to hound you for why weren't you here and blah, blah, blah. It's up to you to make sure you're getting here and you're doing the work. Um, it's my job to just make sure you're accountable for anything that you do. So if you're not here, I mark you absent. You make it up, I take that off. I didn't turn in my work on time but have a really good excuse. Can I still turn it in? Right, always turn it in, but you will get deducted a point for every time you don't. Even if it's not fully complete, still turn in what you have. That way you can still fix it up and still get full credit, okay? <clears throat> can I fix an assignment uh, to raise a grade? Yes. yes, okay? So typically when you turn in your assignments, I'll grade them, I'll hand back your sheets, um, and then you will fix it up within two weeks and then submit it back to me for a redo if you are doing that, okay? Uh, this is a new section I thought was <clears throat> uh, appropriate. Frequently given excuses. So I will read the excuse, and then you tell me what the remedy is so it's not really an excuse. So if somebody says, I forgot to do homework, study, due dates, blah, 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 what should they have done? Paid attention? Written it down? Taken notes? Set a reminder? Calendars? A thousand things, right? Good. I didn't get the email. Did you check your email, right? <clears throat> um, check your spam. Sometimes your email account on file that I'm sending stuff to is your parents' account. Some students have this where their parents register for them for the college, and that's the email that it goes to. So make sure that that's not the email that you have set up. Go to My Macomb, go to uh, Canvas, whatever it is. Make sure you're getting your email sent to your address. Uh, my computer internet wasn't working. Yep, we have internet here. <clears throat> so make sure you can get into the lab. If it's a Sunday, Maybe you shouldn't have waited until Sunday to do your stuff, right? So always plan ahead for these kinds of things. Your power might go out, and you don't have a computer, you don't have internet, anything. You can't get into the nuke license because you don't have internet to log in to get the nuke license. So plan for these things that these are going to happen. <clears throat> it's just part of the world. Um, make do with it. I don't have the software at home. We have the software here, right? Uh, or download the software now, this week so that you can make sure that you do have it at home. So that Sunday night, I'm not getting a, an email saying, I can't get the software to work and the assignment's due tomorrow, right? Um, if you download it at home, you see that it works. Nuke doesn't take up a whole lot of resources until we get to the heavier stuff. So it shouldn't be a huge issue. Typically, like even lower end stations can run it. <clears throat> um, I didn't understand what you wanted. Ask, <clears throat> ask, ask a lot, ask often. Verify. Is this what you wanted? Yep. Okay. Good. Um, I've never used this software or forgotten how to do something. Practice. Ask. Um, every video that I have is going to be up on Canvas, so obviously make sure you follow it. If we get to a Photoshop part, you've forgotten how to use Photoshop, go to YouTube, go to Google, figure that stuff out. Um, <clears throat> I'm your teacher. I want to make sure I teach you stuff, but I don't want you to be a, uh, a crutch to you that you're always like, I need to ask Sean. I need to ask Sean. There's no other resources in the world. 
except my teacher, okay? When you go out there and you're working in the real world, you're stuck in your area building your stuff. You have to be able to find these resources to correct things. So don't be afraid to ask me, but don't use me as your only resource, okay? Um, I don't have time to work outside of class. Prioritize, right? Get time to work outside of class. If you honestly don't have a single hour or two hours to spend outside of class, don't take the class, okay? You're gonna have a horrible time during the class if you can't budget your time to fit that uh, time frame in there. Um, it just will not work. <clears throat> I wasn't here last class or classes. Right. Make friends in class, ask them what we missed. Email the instructor, what did I miss? Um, anything. My file got corrupted. Save often, backups, different versions. And what happens if none of those work? Start over. Suck it up and start over. It happens all the time. Okay. One of the cool things about Nuke that I really enjoy is the fact that what we work on is so visual. Okay. So this here to you means nothing at the moment. Eventually it'll mean a lot. It'll mean that if I have this thing set up <clears throat> and I have another project that's very similar, I can literally copy this entire chain, drop it somewhere else, and just change a couple things and everything updates. Okay. So as long as I'm comfortable enough with the interface to know how to do that, everything is much more quicker than otherwise. Okay. Um, you'll see the benefits once we again start getting into that. Cool. Questions on that sheet? All right. I'm going to jump back to this one real quick. Um, Contact.sarcona.net. <clears throat> Last week I sent out an email saying um, classes are starting, make sure you register, blah, blah, blah. If you didn't get that email, you're not on the mailing list. Okay. So make sure that if you want to receive emails about classes, events, um, whatever, get on there. Go to that website, register your email. That's where I pull the email list from. <clears throat> uh, what was that? Really? Hmm. I don't know. You have to talk to registration about that one. Um, Vimeo. This is, whoops. Why did that not work? That's why I put everything under here. Modules. Make on Vimeo. It doesn't like the caps. How weird. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, the Meeting Communication Arts MACA MCC group on Vimeo. Um, all the students, or not all, but a lot of students who have graduated or are currently students, they posted videos here about different things that they're working on, their demo reels, projects, blah, blah, blah. So it's a good way for you to see what people in the industry are using um, as their tools as their demo reel, as their pieces, projects they're working on. <clears throat> this was an advanced After Effects project, but it has more than just After Effects in it. Parts of it were After Effects. So this guy walking up, he used to have a logo on the side of his hat. <clears throat> the hat was tracked in Nuke, and the logo was removed. Okay? Um, well, sorry. Let me start at the beginning. They shot the video, they edited the video, and then they brought the separate pieces into Nuke to do that part. Uh, one of the guys did this stuff. Um, he used Animate, or it was Flash at the time, I think. He used Flash and frame by frame drew this entire animation that you see. Is it possible to do frame by frame motor scoping and after effects? It is. Okay. Yep. He just liked to animate better. Okay. Same thing there. And then this at the very end was um, uh, 3D and then composited in Nuke and then brought it into After Effects and composited it all together. Okay. So just a piece of it, right?
Nope, just the mask tool. That's all you're using. Or shapes or whatever you want. <clears throat> um, here's Rob's reel. So a lot of these that you're seeing are <clears throat> um, Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, 3D stuff. <clears throat> um, all of these ones that are rendered out, they're rendered in 3D, but then brought into Nuke to enhance to make them look better. Same thing here. That's just a regular render. That's After Effects. That's just rendered, rendered, rendered. There you go. This is After Effects here, right there, and 3D. So the spaceship is actually 3D put inside the scene, rendered out, but then all the explosions and the doors and the fire and all that, that's all done in After Effects. And then this is done inside Nuke and 3D. <clears throat> that's all After Effects. This is all Nuke, so he replaced his computer screens with these logos. This is all um, green screen, After Effects. This is Nuke here, replacing the screen there. He did. He said he got some weird looks when he was recording in the theater. Uh, this is Lake St. Clair, <coughs> um, I don't know, a long, year, long time ago. Um, he recorded this and then replaced it with that. So something you might see inside of a movie where they have these like desert scenes, which is very boring, and then they added all the fancy stuff to it. Same thing here. That's not what it looks like outside of that door. <laughs> yep. And there's Chris. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot that Nuke can do, and this is a good way to see different sites, samples, different things that people have worked on. And if there's any question, all those people that are on there are typically pretty cool about, hey, how'd you do this, or what software, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, especially if there's a company you want to work for and one of those guys works there typically you can get like at least an in um, oops maca there we go uh, facebook has a maca group <clears throat> so if you're on facebook you can check this out typically people post tutorials jobs um, links news things just random stuff um, that applies to obviously our area I have not yet. Yeah, that's what I heard. The last class was talking about it, so I left. <laughs> Behance, Motion Spire, Art Station. These are all different websites that, again, you should probably be on. <clears throat> Make sure you have your portfolios. Don't wait until you're graduated to start putting your stuff online. You have to do that as soon as possible. Even if your stuff isn't you know, as good as you're seeing in some of the other stuff, that's fine. You're students, you're growing. Some of the reels that I have from students when they were students are pretty horrible. That's fine. You're going to grow. You have to get your stuff up online, get comments, get likes, see what works, what doesn't work, and then figure it out, okay? <clears throat> uh, LinkedIn is another cool website. And usually about this time, I get about 10 students from all my classes who actually go to LinkedIn, register, and connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, these are <clears throat> basically a living, breathing resume. So if you have a, um, like I said, you want a job at some point, you have to have a resume. This is where companies typically look for people. <clears throat> Here's all my information. Here's my skills. Um, here are people who have viewed my profile. Here's where I've appeared in searches. I have no article views, apparently. Uh, my activity, experience. <clears throat> Here's my education, volunteering, skills and endorsements. My recommendations. If I found someone in the industry, I can say, hey, can you write me a letter of recommendation? And they could write up something to put inside here. Um, any certification that I have. <clears throat> I am Nuke certified. Uh, Um, in Michigan, there's only two people certified. It's me and um, Dylan is the other one. Dylan used to teach um, this class, and I couldn't anymore. Oops. 
but this is all the people, and there's very few people that are actually Nuke certified in, there's Dylan right there, and somewhere in here, there I am, there's Sean, contact Sean, but even through this, I've gotten actually a, um, cool, I've gotten a couple people who have said, hey, I see you're Nuke certified, I want to um, hire you for blah, 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 freelancing, and usually I say no, because I don't like to freelance, <clears throat> it's not for me. Um, there's my Vimeo page. Here's some interests that I have. People can look at this, and if they are hiring someone, they can basically go over here and do a search for people who are using oops, Nuke in Detroit. So here's Randy knows Nuke, Steve knows Nuke, there's Dylan. This photo of Dylan is like, it's a really good picture. Like, I wish I looked like that rugged. I never looked that rugged. <laughs> There's Adam, Janelle, and so on. Um, so they can find people who are in Detroit who are doing Nuke. They can look at their resume, look at their connections, look at what they've done, see their demo reels. So a lot of employers now who are doing this stuff will typically go to this kind of format to find people. Um, so it's great to have. Also, <clears throat> you as a person can look for jobs that use Nuke. So I can go to Nuke, Detroit. And here is Compositor using Photoshop, After Effects, Nuke, and 3D compositing at Cybercoders and Royal Oak. Here's Dassault, Compositing Artist. Here's a software developer using Maya and Nuke scripting. Here's Fahrenheit IT. Here's Fahrenheit IT again. Job Network, Talent Advantage, Dassault again, Quickie. Okay, so lots of jobs using that. Again, a good resource to be able to do that. When you apply for these jobs, again, it's just like a direct connect right to your resume, right to people who know you. If I applied at Dassault, where was it at? Right here. Um, I have two or three people. Three people? I don't know. I have at least three people that are at Dassault um, that if they wanted to, they could ask them, hey, you know Sean, how is he at using Nuke? <clears throat> so it's good to have that kind of uh, connection. Uh, on to the next page. So improving your work skills. So being punctual. Uh, will improve your work skills. Being prepared, being accountable, working hard, being committed, having a great attitude, paying attention, and being helpful. All those things make you a better worker. <clears throat> improving your learning style, um, or improving your learning skills. Learning style is the first one. Um, understanding how you learn best is the first step to being able to be a better learner. So I know for me, I have to engross myself with anything that I'm learning. I have to make mistakes, I have to break stuff, and then I have to learn how to fix it, and that's how I learn things. And so I know that, so I'm prepared for that, so when I get into a new tool, I'm fine with doing that, okay? This is how I work. Figuring out how you work, same thing. Whatever works best for you, do it. If you have to read about Nuke and take the class, do it. If you have to watch 20 videos and then do it, then do it. If you have to do the same thing over and over again, then you do it. Um, getting enough sleep eating a healthy diet, exercising, all of these things are just making sure you're in the right state of mind. <clears throat> if you eat crappy food, you're gonna feel crappy when you come to class. If you don't get enough sleep, you're gonna be tired. If you um, don't exercise, you may not have enough energy to do learning stuff. Meditating is good because it clears your mind and helps you focus on the stuff. Visualizing what you're doing in class, thinking about what you've done in class, all that stuff helps you uh, become a better learner. Uh, practicing an instrument or foreign language, uh, helps connect different things in your brain, helps you see things with a different perspective. Again, always good. Drawing or doodling is still good for anyone, regardless of their specialty. And then keeping an open mind, all good stuff. <clears throat> so for this class, uh, we meet 16 weeks. Um, you are allowed four absences. So you don't get free four, four free absences. If you need to take absences, you have four. Try not to miss any classes. Um, I hate missing classes. I try to be here every class that I can. Typically it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, to do. Equipment loan. I think if anything we might need tablets at some point when we get into like um, Photoshop or something. If, yeah, the like Wacom tablets. So if we need Wacom tablets in here we can sign them out. <clears throat> you can use them during class and just return them at the end but just make sure I get the tablet and the pen back and don't break them. 
Um, don't break any of the computers. Don't save anything that you want only to the computers. Um, anything that you save to these computers or the servers can be just deleted by anyone. So make sure you're saving your stuff to your thumb drives, your hard drives, backing it up at home, backing it up on your Google drives, whatever you have to do. Um, I got paranoid a few years ago and I actually have a um, backup system at my house. So when I go home, it backs up certain folders on my computer. So if this dies, I have all my important files. Um, you can't be too safe with that kind of stuff. Um, no eating in class, of course. Cool. And then that's all for that. Any questions on that sheet? Yes, ma'am. On these computers, there's two drives. One of them is the C drive. <clears throat> the other one's the P drive. You can work off the P drive. Like you can start the C drive? Yep, just like that. You can work off of that one. In the industry, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> so being more diverse is better. Um, I like PCs. Some of the software at one point, like Nuke wasn't available on Macs at one point. Um, some of the 3D software just works better for me on a PC. So I like the PCs. I imagine those computers just got upgraded, but the next iteration will probably actually go with PCs just because the Macs are kind of plateauing in how they're offering their stuff versus the cost. So we'll actually probably see more PCs in the labs in future years. Um, but PCs are better overall. <laughs> you should agree with me. I'm right. <laughs> All right, last handout. That one. And that one. And again, if you already have this calendar, you don't have to keep a second copy. You can just pass it along. For the year, yep. <clears throat> I think it's 180. It used to be 100, and then someone went to Eastern, so let's just check it out. Gaming bookstore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Portal site 179. Yep, so 179. <clears throat> that is the discount. Normally it's 500 for the year. So 180 is like a pretty good price. <laughs> or two friends. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the next thing going around is the calendar. Um, this is going to be a kind of different semester from past winter semesters that you'll see. Um, the last day for a refund for this class is Monday or is Sunday the 13th. So if you decide after next class this isn't for you, you want to drop the class, make sure you do it before the 13th, and you'll get some money back. I don't know how much, but some. <clears throat> uh, MLK Day is the 21st, so we will not have class that day. We will make up that Monday later on. We are here that Wednesday. We are here all February. We are here all March. <clears throat> the last day to withdraw from this class is Monday, April 1st. So if you decide after that other date that, you know, maybe this isn't for you then, make sure you withdraw before this date, and then you'll get a W on your transcript versus an E on your transcript if that's where you're at, okay? Um, spring registration also begins. It probably doesn't affect anyone in here. Uh, photography, Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign are the four classes we typically teach in the summer. So if you don't fit under those, then just ignore that registration part. All right, so here's where the weirdness begins. The 15th, we are here. <clears throat> the rest of the week, we're off, but that's Easter week. And then we're here for the 22nd. We're here on the 24th, and that's our turn-in date for everything. That's when our demo reels are due and all of our assignments are due. The 29th is our demo reel viewing day, and then we are done. So we literally have the entire semester, a week off-ish, um, two classes, and then that demo reel day, and that's it. Okay, so this semester is going to be pretty, probably drag on a little bit until it starts getting warmer. Um, then it's going to start flying really quick, okay. There's no two breaks this term. Typically in the winter semester, we used to have two weeks off. It was like one full week and one half week like this. We don't have that anymore. It's just that, that part week, okay. So our class will be done before May. Crazy, right? 
All right, any questions on the calendar? No, pretty straightforward. All right, so you do have homework. <clears throat> so on Canvas, under the discussions, there's two spots, introduce yourself and demo reel. So introduce yourself, you go in there, you reply, and you write information like this. What specialty are you in? What's your name? What field are you going into? Blah, blah, blah. The other discussion board <clears throat> is demo reel. You go to Vimeo, you find a compositing demo reel, you watch it, maybe you watch a couple of them and find your best one. Um, and then you answer those questions while sharing the link. Basically, it's gonna make sure that you know how to get into Canvas, I can see that, and obviously you know how to get to Vimeo and find links and share things, okay? So it's an easy assignment to do. Anyone have an issue being able to do that before Wednesday? No, good, that's what I thought. <laughs> so make sure before Wednesday when you come in, that's all done. Cool, questions? <clears throat> 